This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to answer the question, did Elon Musk invent Bitcoin? If you're interested in topics like this, if you're interested in learning about stock trading strategies that actually work, cryptocurrency strategies, interested in learning more about Bitcoin, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So the more I look at Bitcoin, the weirder I find it to be, and the more unbelievable I find it to be that there was someone who basically had a strong enough background in economics and in cryptography to come up with an invention like Bitcoin. It seems very otherworldly to me. And there's been a lot of speculation, obviously, who Satoshi Nakamoto is, the inventor of Bitcoin, who may be one individual or multiple individuals working together. There have been a bunch of speculations that it could be uh, Nick Zabo, who's a, uh, a living computer scientist, Hal Finney, who's uh, unfortunately no longer with us, but who did work with, uh, supposedly worked with Satoshi Nakamoto uh, and actually received the first Bitcoin transa transaction from him. There's Adam Back, whom you can follow on Twitter, who's also a, a, a cypherpunk and cryptographer. I'm going to examine the evidence in this video that Elon Musk is actually the inventor of Bitcoin. That Bitcoin is weird enough, it's otherworldly enough, as I said, and it was obviously invented by a polymath, someone who's very interested in lots of different areas of research, obviously very high IQ, and has wide-ranging interests from economics to math, etc. And so Elon Musk does uh, possess those qualities, those qualities in common. There's this famous tweet from March of 2014 where uh, someone named Noel asked Elon, Elon, what are your standings on cryptocurrencies? And Musk's response, which is, it hasn't been that well circulated, is, well, well, now that Satoshi Nakamoto has been discovered, presumably uh, admitting himself that he's Satoshi, I guess it is case closed, of course, with a smiley face. And as with Elon, you can never really tell when he's joking, when he's not. So I wanted to delve a little bit deeper into this. The Bitcoin white paper, which was the original white paper, was published on Halloween in 2008. So we're coming up on the 12th anniversary of this publication in uh, just in just a couple days. I highly recommend you read the white paper if you haven't read it already. It's uh, called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, electronic cash system. I'll link to it in the description notes below. But it's it's very, very readable, actually. Uh, I can't, I don't claim I understood every part of it, but it's it's actually surprisingly readable for a cryptography white paper. And obviously, Satoshi was a very good communicator in this sense. And uh, very good, I would say a very good marketer as well, the way he, he, he coined, uh, the way he named the coin, and the way he promoted it uh, during the uh, great financial crisis. So I think he has that in common with Musk. Not quite a little more subdued P.T. Barnum fig figure, but he does have that, that's, that marketing genius in common with Musk. First Bitcoin was mined, what we call the Genesis block, on January 3rd. 2009, so just a few months after the white paper came out. And as I said, the uh, there was text in this first block, which was a quote from the Times saying that Chancellor on brink of a second bailout for banks. So obviously, whoever Satoshi was, he was, he was creating Bitcoin in response to the interventions from the great financial crisis of 2008 to 2009, the rise of bailouts and quantitative easing and all that. Uh, stuff that we now have to live with. Now we have a few, we have a record of all the emails that have been made public at least uh, that Satoshi corresponded with various people through these online forums and also directly through email. Here's the final email uh, to Gavin Andreessen, who's one of the early developers who worked closely with Satoshi. Uh, in this email, Satoshi says, I wish you wouldn't keep talking about me as a mysterious shadowy figure. The press just turns that into a pirate currency angle. Maybe instead make it about the open source project and give more credit to your dev contributors. It helps motivate them. So that is the final email that we have from, that's really verified from Satoshi. The second final is one to a guy named Mike Hearn. And Mike Hearn asked him on April 23rd, 20, uh, 2011, or this was actually the response to Mike. Uh, Mike Hearn had asked him, are you planning on rejoining the community at one point, at some point? for code reviews 
or is your plan to permanently step back from the limelight? And Satoshi's famous, famous answer is, I've moved on to other things. It's in good hands with Gavin and everyone. And that's really the, uh, the last or the second to the last email we have from him. In, uh, since then, Satoshi's coins, as far as I can tell, have never been moved. They've never been sold. He owns a million coins. He, she, or they owns a million coins and uh, obviously worth uh, tens of billions of dollars at this point in time. Now, what happened around, uh, around this time? Well, Tesla had gone public a few months earlier. And so when we have Satoshi saying he's moved on to other things, if it is indeed Musk, he's obviously very busy now that Tesla is public, has raised some money and is really gearing up their production. Now, a lot of people forget about Musk, his really early background, especially uh, the founding of X.com, which was actually an online bank. He was trying to merge banking with the internet. This was founded in 1999, and then it ended up merging with a company called Confinity, which was started by Peter Thiel. Those merged and changed their name and became PayPal. So you can actually... Uh, Musk still owns the domain x.com. You can look it up if you want, and there's just a tiny little x in the uh, in the corner. It's funny that he, he sort of held on to it for sentimental reasons. What a lot of people forget, though, about PayPal and about x.com is that people like Peter Thiel and Elon Musk were very interested in this idea of creating a new global currency. In a recent interview uh, from about a year ago, Nuke, uh, Luke Nozick Luke Nozick uh, admitted basically or reminded people that PayPal originally started as a way of creating a new world currency. Here's another article from Quartz, which I'll link to, as well as a, uh, an AMA on Reddit with Peter Thiel, where uh, the, uh, one of the questions, what is your view on Bitcoin? And Peter responds, PayPal, PayPal built a payment system, but failed in its goal of creating a new world currency, which was actually their slogan back in 2000. And so you have a group of people, the PayPal Mafia, as they're called, who are very interested in this idea of starting new, uh, new currencies. Now, Musk obviously moved on to rockets, he moved on to electric cars, but there's this, there's this gap between when PayPal was sold to eBay in 2002 and when Musk really began to gear up. He was obviously reading about rockets at about this this point in time right after PayPal. He obviously had hundreds of millions of dollars that he had made that he could roll into SpaceX and Tesla. But uh, there's speculation that be, that they obviously had to sign some sort of non-compete, uh, the uh, PayPal founders and, uh, and Elon, when they sold PayPal to eBay. And so if he had built a second currency, he couldn't he would not be able to roll it out as a as a uh, as a private company or a corporation. It would have to be an anonymous. It would have to be decentralized, uh, etc. And this was something obviously Musk came from South Africa. He knows what it's like uh, to uh, have to deal with. Uh, his father was in the mining industry. He had an interest in an emerald mine. He knew he knew uh, Musk obviously growing up in South Africa is very familiar with gold and. It's interesting, you know, Bitcoin is obviously viewed as a form of digital gold as a store of value. As we mentioned, Musk and Satoshi, both very high IQ, both serial entrepreneurs, both um, both famous for writing academic white papers. You can look up Musk's white paper, uh, to, I think it's a 2013 white paper on the hyper Hyperloop. Now, Musk was actually asked about Bitcoin in this interview, which I'll link to. I'm not going to play it here. And it's kind of funny how, how much he stumbles. He's not always the best public speaker, but uh, if he if he is the creator of Bitcoin, you could see perhaps some some nervousness in this interview. There's, a, uh, there's an intern at SpaceX who wrote this article about three years ago about how uh, he believed that, that Musk invented Bitcoin. There's uh, a couple of points he makes which are interesting that Musk actually was a fairly proficient programmer in C++, which he used to um, he used as the foundation at X.com, at SpaceX, and also he used in his first company, which was a company called Zip2, where Musk did a lot of the original programming himself. I can't remember whether it was in C or C++, but obviously very familiar with this. And um, obviously Bitcoin 
uh, the, the original source code was, was written uh, in C++. Um, Musk, obviously, serial entrepreneur, very, um, very smart, at, at, very good at coming up to speed on new topics, basically taught himself about rockets, taught himself about electric vehicles, uh, etc. The, then there's the, the sort of uh, linguistic, uh, linguistic thing. So the, uh, if you do a textual analysis of Satoshi Nakamoto's emails and uh, the white paper, but especially the emails and his uh, forum postings, you find a lot of expressions like bloody hard, uh, flat, maths, gray, color, sort of British English or Commonwealth spellings of, uh, of English words like gray and color. Now, here's an example uh, of, a, uh, of a, a slash dot submission where he talks about, where Satoshi talks about writing a description for this thing for general audiences, bloody hard. This is an example of the sort of British or Commonwealth English. Elon Musk, obviously born in South Africa, spent some time in Canada as well. He uses, uh, he still uses the British, uh, British English form of lots of words like gray, uh, G-R-E, uh, G-R-E-Y, and in this uh, in this uh, tweet, he t he uses he says bloody hell, uh, bloody hard. This is not usually something that Americans say unless they're being ironic. So there is the the linguistic aspect to it as well, which is obviously somewhat circumstantial. There is the uh, reasoning from first principles, with which Musk is famous for, and Satoshi is famous for as well in the Bitcoin paper. It's the idea of uh, what they also have in common, or if they're the same person, is Satoshi and Elon both are uh, not averse to taking on really difficult problems, taking on very hard, um, very hard projects, creating a new rocket company, creating a new car company, creating a new currency. This is the pay, what the PayPal, PayPal mafia is famous for, taking on these really big, uh, these really big ideas. And then there's obviously the um, there's the irony too of that uh, Satoshi. A lot of people believe that it is a uh, it's an anagram, or it's the uh, if you take the initial uh, the initial letters of each of these words. So a man took uh, S H I T. It sort of fits with uh, Elon Musk's uh, potty humor, which we see in his uh, Twitter. This is, a, this is an interesting article, it really compares Musk to ben, Benjamin Franklin as well, talking about his polymath, um, his polymath characteristics. Uh, they both spent some time in, uh, both started uh, in the newspaper business, etc. cetera. And uh, so again, we have circumstantial evidence here. We have, the, the really strange thing is how little Musk talks about Bitcoin. You would think that he would be, it'd be something he'd be more interested in, especially given his background at x.com and PayPal, you think it would be something that he would come right out and endorse. Instead, he endorses coins like uh, Dogecoin as sort, of, as sort of a joke. Now, Musk has come out and said publicly, I'm not Bitcoin Satoshi Nakamoto, especially when these articles were coming out and the speculation was really heating up. But if he is Satoshi, this is what we, it, what we would expect. We would expect uh, denials like this. And it makes sense if you want to keep the currency completely decentralized. Once you have a very charismatic public founder like we have in Vitalik Buterin for Ethereum, that's really a point of failure where the project is no longer as decentralized. There's a point of failure for terrorists or governments to attack and kidnap this person. So one would expect if Musk were Satoshi that he would uh, that he would deny it. Obviously, Musk is very wealthy. He doesn't need the the million Bitcoin, and that this could explain one reason why it's never been sold. Musk is very famous, in fact, for selling very little stock, for selling very little of his holdings, and instead leveraging up and betting everything uh, on his next company. So it sort of fits with uh, Musk's anti anti materialism, and also his. Um, uh, his character. Musk was asked uh, around the same time how much Bitcoin he owned, and he said he only owned approximately uh, 0.25 Bitcoin, which is uh, just a few a few thousand dollars still at this point. Now, one, one speculation is that 
there is uh, there's been this speculation they call it the, I think it's called the good Satoshi hypothesis which is that Satoshi basically destroyed his private keys to those a million, original 1 million bitcoins so uh, and so no one else could take possession of them so they wouldn't be stolen and so and also so that perhaps he wouldn't be tempted to move them or spend them and this is a way again another way of sort of lowering the supply of bitcoin and so this is another thing we would expect if Musk were the inventor of Bitcoin, he would say, I no longer own any Bitcoin. I, I simply don't control the private keys. I've destroyed them and that, that, that million Bitcoin is lost forever. Again, a lot of circumstantial evidence. I think it's fun to speculate about. I would say that there's a non-zero probability that Musk is Satoshi Nakamoto. I wouldn't put a super high probability, but it's fun to speculate about these things. And I think it'd be really interesting to actually do more text, textual analysis of Musk's papers and tweets and compare them to Satoshi. I haven't seen a lot of this done online, but this would be another way to look for textual sim similarities and see if there's more than what I've uncovered in this video. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments and speculations in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.